What's up, guys? I'm Chris Spags here, back with another Four Corners video for today's nine-game NBA slate, courtesy of Osmo.com. There's a lot of value, a lot of questions on today's slate, but one guy I'm really curious about is Devin Booker. So today, like this video, leave a comment down below giving me a guess as to what Devin Booker's real-life points today are going to be, how much he's going to score. He's had over 45 real-life points in his last three games, so he's on a hot run, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But if you give me a guess as to what Devin Booker's real-life points are today, and you're correct, I'll give you a special shout-out in the video tomorrow. And of course, the guy who is correct about who is going to be the best value plays on Friday slate, he'll get a special shout-out at the end of this video. Now, as I mentioned, the first corner I wanted to hit on is a game with the Cavs versus the Suns. This one is a 221.5 point combined total, which represents a 4.8 point boost for Phoenix and a 5.3 point boost for Cleveland. Devin Booker's had three straight games over 68.25 fantasy points, and in all of those, he's had over 45 real life points as well. He now shares an honor with Will Chamberlain. They're the only guys who have scored over 45 real life points in three straight games, all of which are losses. So congrats to Devin Booker there. But I still don't mind Devin Booker even with his price up. The 26% ownership seems about right for him. He's had a 37% usage rate in his last five games. It seems like they're letting him stat chase all he wants down the stretch, and that's what Devin Booker loves to do. The matchup versus the Cavs, who are giving up a really generous field goal percentage as well, a good spot for Devin Booker to keep it rolling, so I don't mind matching the field on Booker and maybe even going a little bit above it. Josh Jackson returns to the lineup last game. It still looked a little bit gimpy. He shot just four for nine on the day. More importantly, though, he didn't take usage away from Devin Booker, and I think that's the most important part that we care about here. Josh Jackson, I'm not dying to get to. He's going to have some ownership on him, and I really don't know that I see the upside if he is going to be a little bit hobbled out there and not pushing his usage up a ton, so I don't mind Josh Jackson, but I'm not trying to get there a ton. I think it's more important to note, though, that he isn't affecting Devin Booker, at least as of yet. Rashawn Holmes projects for 47% ownership with no DeAndre Ayton out there, and that seems about right. It's going to be a lower-paced matchup here versus the Cavs, but Holmes still at a reasonable price with a good bit of upside, so I have no issue with Rashawn Holmes, and I think coming close to the ownership of the field here on a day in which there's a ton of value still works for me. Dragon Mender is also a decent value, and he's actually had two straight games of over 30 minutes and 25.5 fantasy points. He'd be a bit more appealing if Rashawn Holmes were to miss. Um, Rashawn Holmes was suffering from a migraine in which he missed last game for, so that could certainly flare back. Uh, for now, I would find Holmes to be the safer play, but Bender, not completely out of play for me. Kevin Love is currently questionable, but if he's available, he's a strong value play. His price is down enough where he should have a ton of upside here. The scoring should be there versus Phoenix, so I like Kevin Love a bit, as long as he's actually in the lineup. Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance are also a bit overpriced, but they're still in play here. They would get a little more appealing if there's no Love out there. Obviously, Love being out there would open up some more minutes for Nance. Love not being out there would open up some more usage for Jordan Clarkson, so those things would benefit them. But even as is, they're still both playable, just a bit uncomfortably priced. And Tristan Thompson had 26 minutes last game without Kevin Love. In this spot, that could be a lot more beneficial if Love were ruled out. So I don't mind Tristan Thompson at just $4,100 on DraftKings. He could have some upside, even though he hasn't shown that big upside that he showed earlier this year since he's been back in the rotation. The next corner I want to hit on is a game with the Blazers visiting the Wolves. This one is a 224.5 point combined total, which is flat with Portland season average, and it's a 1.8 point decrease for Minnesota. Damian Lillard was good versus Atlanta, though his upside was capped a bit by a blowout there, and he was bad versus Detroit. But the most important thing to me was that he shot 25 times of both those games. That kind of usage is hard to find even on a slate like this, and this matchup should be beneficial for him. The Wolves allowing 46.7% from the floor, so that should bode well for Lillard if he is going to shoot 25 times in a game. And I think the idea of playing Lillard alongside Booker is an interesting approach for a tournament lineup given all the value we have today. Enos Cantor had his first big day as a starter versus Detroit with 20 points and 15 rebounds for 42.75 fantasy points. Minnesota's allowing a near slate high 11.2 offensive rebounds a game, and that should benefit Cantor as well. So I don't mind going back to Cantor here. I think with his price being up, people aren't going to go there much. And I think it's an okay spot to go back to him, even though the matchup with Towns could really go either way. Al Camino, Mo Harkless, and Seth Curry are all okay plays, but I feel like their price is maybe a bit high for the production you're going to get from them. There's no guarantee for any of them. Al Aminu had 9.75 fantasy points versus Detroit, as Cantor took a lot of the rebounding upside that Aminu has been claiming recently. Mo Harkless is a little bit steadier. Seth Curry's usage rate isn't there. So I don't mind these guys. I don't mind Harkless. I don't mind going back to Aminu if you're not playing Cantor. Seth Curry really not there for me either way, but these guys really just don't look that great for where their prices are. On a slate which we know we have a ton of value, you should have some upside. Carl Anthony Towns is 25% ownership projected for him, and he's been under 49.75 fantasy points in his last three games, but the minutes and opportunity have been there for the most part, so I don't mind coming close to the field on Towns. I think there is some risk there with just him not getting enough usage recently, which I'll talk more about in a second, but Towns still in a good spot. It seems like the opportunity is there, and the matchup versus Enos Cancer should not offer him any sort of appreciable difficulty. Andrew Wiggins has been taking some of Towns' usage with 18-plus shots in his last three games. I never want to pay up for Andrew Wiggins, but that kind of usage is hard to ignore. That said, though, I'd rather go back to Towns and hope he gets some of that usage back. But I think overall, the usage that Wiggins has had recently gives me some concern for Towns and maybe a slight bit of interest in Wiggins. Josh Akogi, like much of the rest of the team, looks okay, but just a little bit overpriced for where they are. Again, we have value guys who can get you to where Josh Akogi and Dario Saric is at, so I don't mind going to value instead of these guys who are maybe a little more secure, but really not offering a ton of upside. 
That said, if I had to choose, I would still go with the Kogi. I think he's in a good spot to have a bounce back game after a down one last time out. The next corner I want to hit on is a game with the Bulls visiting the Knicks. This one is a 213.5 point combined total, which represents a 3.5 point boost for New York. And it's flat with Chicago's season average. Mitchell Robinson projects to be the highest owned Nick at 36% ownership. He had 37 minutes in the last game, which was a start versus Miami. He put up 52.75 fantasy points there. He also had 40 fantasy points in the one before that. They're giving him the run now. The opportunity is there. This matchup versus the Bulls is about as good as it can get for Mitchell Robinson. So I like him quite a bit here. I might even go a little bit over the field on him. Luke Cornett had 36 minutes and 45.5 fantasy points in his start versus Miami. So he looked just about as good as Robinson. They also played pretty well together. I think there's a chance here the Knicks could go a little bit smaller because the Bulls really don't offer a lot of size. But Cornett, if he is going to get that much run with Noah Vonley out, it's a good opportunity for him. And he has been productive on a permanent basis whenever he's actually seen the run that he needs. Manuel Moutier and Dennis Smith both have some assist upside here, but it worries me a little bit that they're both in rotation now. I prefer Moutier. It seems like his minutes are a bit more secure as they're trying to figure out what they have with them. And again, the assist upside is there. So one of these guys could have a day. I think it's just hard to really bank on either of them at high volume, knowing that they're both going to be in the rotation. Walt Lemon had 42.5 fantasy points in 31 minutes of his debut versus Toronto. He had 19 real life points, also contributed some blocks, some steals, some assists, a lot of contributions across the board. So I don't mind going to Lemon here. It's going to be really highly owned. We have him at 66% ownership right now, but at the minimum price as a guy who's going to get some opportunity and who seems like he's competent with it. He's also good in the G League as well. So I I don't mind matching the field on Walt Lemon. Timothy Luwawu Cabarro had a nice day as well last time out versus Toronto. He had an 18.10 rebound game and at just 1% ownership, he's going to be a lot less owned than Lemon. So maybe as a pivot to Lemon, if you are going under the field on Lemon, it might be a move to try one of these other cheap guys. A guy like Luwawu Cabarro, who is a little more expensive than Lemon is, but still very cheap relative to the slate. Shaq Harrison's likely a bit too expensive now, but at just 4% ownership, he can be interesting. He's still been getting the opportunity, still getting the minutes, still doing a good per minute job, shooting a lot, even though he's not hitting them. So Shaq Harrison, probably a viable pivot to Walt Lemon, but I still would rather go to Walt Lemon at the minimum price again. Cristiano Felicio is a little bit interesting as we should continue to see Robin Lopez's minutes come down down the stretch. Really no point for him to be seeing a ton of run at this point. I think the issue though is there's a big opportunity cost if you went with Felicio at center. You'd be missing out on guys like Robinson, guys like Towns. All these guys have gigantic upsides. Felicio will get you 30 maybe on his best day. That's probably not enough for a slate like this. And the last corner I want to hit on is just the notable absences, which I think have the most impact on the slate. We've got a lot of guys out and a lot of guys will benefit from those guys being out. Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler out opens an interesting opportunity for Philadelphia. Both Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris should benefit from a usage level. Jonah Bolden as well last game had 43.5 fantasy points, but it seems tough for me to see him getting to that level again, given that he shot five for seven from three. It's just hard for Jonah Bolden to do stuff like that every game, but I think he's an okay value guy though, but not somebody I'm trying to bank on a lot. The opportunity though for Simmons and Tobias Harris is pretty big. Simmons is just going to have a lot of time with the ball. Should be a really strong play. Tobias Harris as well looks pretty good. So those guys really good beneficiaries of Embiid and Butler being out. Blake Griffin being out for Detroit also means that Andre Drummond's pretty interesting, even with a tough matchup versus Indiana. Uh, Reggie Jackson also had 44.5 fantasy points and 35% usage versus Portland last time with no Blake. Thon Maker, a passable value guy, though not as appealing as some of the other value guys we talked about so far. But again, really Andre Drummond's the guy I'm keying in on here. I think his rebounding is going to be still an asset versus Indiana. He's going to get a lot of plays inside, so going to get a lot of touches. So Andre Drummond to me, worth his ownership right now. We've got Darren Collison and Wesley Matthews out on the Indiana side. And that'll open up a start for Corey Joseph and Tyreek Evans. I prefer Tyreek Evans here. He's busted so many times as chalk, but on a permanent basis, he's still been there. Again, not a great matchup versus Detroit, not a great matchup on either side, really. But it is a spot where Tyreek Evans, I imagine, can have the upside to get there. So I don't mind him here. Josh Richardson continues to be out for the Heat. And today in this matchup versus Boston, the Heat really need the win. They're in the eighth seed right now, barely hanging on above the Magic. It's a spot where Goran Dragic has had 37 minutes in his last two games starting for Josh Richardson. The usage has been there. The opportunity has been there. He had one big day, one really bad day. So Goran Dragic matching his ownership in the mid-teens with where we're projecting him right now seems about right for me. Derek Favors is expected to be out for the Jazz's game against Charlotte. It's a spot where you should see more run for Jay Crowder as a result. Should also see some more opportunity for Rudy Gobert on the boards and, you know, just defensively, just doing everything inside. So Rudy Gobert a little more appealing. Jay Crowder also a little more appealing because of Derek Favors being out. And the last one I would consider very important, Giannis Antetokounmpo is currently questionable. If he's out again, you're probably not going to see the big days from guys like Bonzi Colson or Tim Frazier or Sterling Brown because we are expected to have Chris Middleton and Eric Bledsoe back in the lineup as well. But keep a close eye on this one. If Giannis is in, he's a really strong place, averaging almost 70 fantasy points versus the Nets this year. If he's out, obviously going to open up a lot of opportunity elsewhere. So there we go. Those are my thoughts on today's slate. And there are a lot more in the link in the description down below. My column is switch and hedge at awesome.com. If you click that, you can see all the details on all the games, all the data I have right at your fingertips. So go check that out, the link in the description. And as I mentioned on Friday, the special shout out of the day goes to Paul Holderman. You can see his comment here. He's the only guy actually who submitted a value guy who 
actually had a decent day. Dwayne Bacon, a little bit under 7x value. So Paul Holderman, congrats. You are the big winner of the comments. So good job by you, buddy. And as I mentioned for today's video, please like it and leave a comment down below giving me a guess as to what Devin Booker's real life points are. The person who's the closest gets a special shout out in tomorrow's video. So like the video right now and comment Devin Booker's real life points down below. Last but not least, check the promo code Switch and Hedge. It'll give you half off your first month at Osmo.com on any package. If you want to do an all sport package, so you get both NBA and MLB content for both those seasons, you can do that right now. All the ownership projections from Osmo and the rankings as well. He's the top player in the world because of the data that he gives you guys every single day. So check that out with the promo code Switch and Hedge. I'll be back again tomorrow with another Four Corners video, so good luck.